G'day everyone, Greg here from Fish Plate Films and welcome back to the BNSF Burbles Division. Well, it's been a long time between drinks, hasn't it? How's that rash? Is it alright? Uh, it's good. Well, today we're getting back to our weathering series which is long overdue and we are transforming this Kato SD70 Mac Executive into this Kato 70 Mac Executive. Uh, two models that I've had for a long time and basically needing a weathering and I started the weathering project with these a few years ago doing a black wash on these locos to fill in all the little cracks and get shadow lines in there and we'll be doing that a little bit differently again when we go inside to do the uh, dusting and the uh, pan pastels and we'll be using some Tamiya panel line which is fantastic stuff and I use that quite a bit it's like an indigo ink anyway so the first thing we're going to do is put a light fade on some of this with an airbrush and then we're not going to make it too dirty these uh, Macs tend to look pretty good and they haven't been patched yet these have to be patched so what will happen is when I finally get the decals uh, I will clean some of the weathering off like in real life and put the BNSF patch on there and it'll look like it's just been done in the shops so let's get into it and the first thing we'll be doing is doing a light a light weather uh, with a light brown or a light sort of bony color then we'll go a little bit darker on the trucks. Our trucks have many colours on them, probably four or five different colours, even more. And we'll be doing some initial colouring on the trucks with an airbrush, and then we'll be doing some pan pastels inside. And same with the wheels. And the wheels we're going to be doing with a rolling road. We won't be taking the trucks apart and spraying the wheels separately. We'll be doing it with a rolling road. So that's something to look forward to. So let's get into it. First thing, mix our paint with these little mixers. Now we have to be very careful with these lights. You can see how that's come on there. We have to be very, very careful. Just a quick little one up the fuel tank there. And that is about it. We're going to do now we're going to come from this side, get in there to the fuel tank. Like that. Now, of course, the top is often neglected. We spend a lot of time looking down on our locos. So it's always good to get the top more faded. There we go. Now, see, I'm doing nice. And then every time you finish doing a pass, make sure you give it a good squirt to get the air out. Always use a paint extender as well if you don't have a paint extender in your thinners. A paint extender is something that stops the paint from drying quickly because in an airbrush the paint's drying as it's leaving the brush also remember this uh, very light weathering is almost like an undercoat for your powders as well powders don't like sticking to the factory paint too much uh, it's a little bit too shiny for them so you put a tiny little bit of on that's it that's it with that. So now we'll go on to a slightly darker wash, a slightly darker brown for the trucks and a tiny little bit up the side here. Probably going a slightly darker brown colour this time, still very light. A bit of a test spray here. So this, what I'm going to do with this is go over the places that I didn't go in the other one. Maybe a little bit down the side there. Up here on the fuel tank is always interesting to do as well. So we might do a little bit along there. Also with this EMD trucks, make sure you get down here and round here and also what I'll do, I'll put this on the ground and turn these trucks to get them into here. And also do the fuel tanks, end of the fuel tanks, they get filthy. Now I'm not going to go up the side here with this colour, I'm leaving that for the dirtier colour there and I think I'm pretty happy with that. Might just do a little bit on the front pilot and all that sort of thing. And then we'll go to the darker brown. So we'll repeat this on the other side now. 
Now this is our third colour on our trucks, it's more of a brown. You can see we have three colours here, or well, sorry, two already. Our lighter one, our darker one here that I've put little spots in. And then with this darker one here, we'll go over some of the others, go over and do a little bit up here, but not too much. Try and keep these locos relatively clean. See that slightly darker there. Now I hear what you're saying, Greg, you're painting the wheels, you're painting the wheels, oh my god, we're going to die. That's right, I'm painting the wheels, and what we'll be doing later on, get in there, whoa, whoa, tragedy, tragedy. It's alright, don't panic, trendsetters. There we go. Uh, I've got some, obviously, I've just washed this out, so there's a little bit of... it kicks on. Now this is the tricky part to get it up here without going too crazy. Start away from the locomotive. Oh, see that there? Boom, boom. That's it. That's it. Super super fine. That's all I want. Remember with an airbrush once you start seeing it sometimes it's too late. And also another thing to do with when you're painting the trucks is tilt the tilt the loco and get up underneath so you can come up come up and replicate the dirt getting splashed up through here. I really like that. Just that little bit of brown there, a little bit has gone up onto the side of the body here, but that's it. That's it. As with a lot of things in life, less is more. try and get some stuck along in this little top of the fuel tank there. Turn the truck. In there, lovely. Go. Put some foam on the back here so the uh, Windshields don't get bent. Same thing, tilt it up to do this uh, underbody of this front truck here. Ah, oh, look at that. I'm liking it. Now for our last colour, we're using this darker brown. Uh, this is rail brown actually, I think. Yes it is. Acrylic. Now, how do you know when you've mixed your paints correctly to the right thickness? They say milk. I don't know what bloody milk is. Well, I know what it is, but I don't have it. You can see my test here. If I can get it to run, you know, about that far, thereabouts it's about right there is you can find a thing on YouTube where a guy has all these little flow charts and they actually time it but you can see most of my run about that far so you can see some of these here that wasn't uh, runny enough uh, some of these here maybe that's a little bit too runny somewhere around there is a good thickness for your acrylic paints now what thinner you use is totally up to you I use I've experimented with some homemade ones and they work pretty well the main thing is is that you use a paint extender. That's crucial. And what that does, uh, it stops the paint from drying in the airbrush. It just gives it that little bit more time to dry. Okay, here we go there, rail brown. Always do a test spray first. Very lightly. You can see the darkness there. So I'm going over different areas. So there's still a little bit of uh, thinner in that, but that's okay. I'm not going to go up on the body anymore. I might do a little bit here in the fuel tank. A little bit over that previous. But what we really want is different colours everywhere. Blend that in. 
on the end of the fuel tank there. I might run a little bit along the bottom. No, I think I'll leave that, actually. I'm really happy with that. So you can see the three different colours. You've got one there, the other one just on the end of it there, and the darker brown there, and the mid-brown is sort of somewhere here. Now what I could do, if you didn't want to take the wheels off or do them on a rolling road like I'm going to do, you could literally spray this part here now, take the loco out, roll it forward a bit and bring it back. But I don't care because wheels are patchy. We're going to put this up on a rolling road like a dyno and the wheels are going to spin and we're going to paint the wheels over this spray so we get a more even and it'll be a really interesting effect. But once again, there's more than one way to skin a cat. But there's only a couple of ways to boil them. No, come on, that's that. Come on, that's another. I like cats. I couldn't eat a whole one, though. I have to say, the combination of these three colours is really good. Now, what I've also done is put a little bit of that rail brown on the roof here to simulate a bit of rust and dirt and a little bit along here and uh, where else have we got here a little bit on the sides of the cab there and we can put some powders over that for rust and that'll loop now you might be saying you haven't masked the windscreen you haven't masked the windscreen no i don't mask the windscreens because in real life dirt gets in all around there and what i do is i come back with a little q-tip and I go in there with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I literally clean the windows. It comes off like that and that way you still get the dirt on the sills and all around there and it saves pulling tape off. I know if I tried to mask this, I would break something trying to get the tape off. So that's why I don't do that. It's a method in my madness. Right, we're inside now, we've got our locomotive on our rolling road. And this is some rollers I bought from Micromark, I think. And you uh, assemble them, they take a little bit of time putting together, but they're lots of little ball bearings and screws. And they just sit on the tracks, get their power up through each side here, and get your power into the loco, and you can do all sorts of things. Run the loco, uh, do testing, all that sort of thing, while it's sitting on the bench. But today we're going to use it to paint these wheels. Right, so we're using this uh, brown, where are we? Brown here, it's a, uh, what's it called, what's it called? It's just called brown, Tamiya Brown, there you go. And I'm doing the two wheels that aren't on the roller, because I don't want to risk getting paint in these little rollers here. So we'll do these two, then we'll put the, uh, the rollers underneath this one, do the middle truck, and then we'll do the rest of the locomotive, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Also, always have the wheels running away from the brush. So you don't want, you want the paint to be dragged off the brush, you don't want the wheels running, turning the other way. If I was painting from this side, I'd want the wheels going in the other direction so it doesn't push the, the fibres of the brush around. So. And no, you won't get it up into the bearings unless you're really, really stupid. But if you take the wheels off and paint them, you're going to get it up into the bearings anyway and have to clean them. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. You can see the, uh, I'm going over the tread there. Now I don't mind if it's a little bit uh, rough and not perfect because that's how they are. And also remember we do have some airbrush paint on here too from when we were airbrushing them and that's not even either that was in little patches so makes it just look that a little bit more realistic just have to be uh, a little bit careful this is quite hard for me to do with my one eye here for some reason I don't know why I'm having a lot of troubles seeing where I am but anyway, 
I don't care if it's not perfect. Because remember we've got, you can see the paint coming around here from our airbrush. And as I was saying before, you could actually do this with an airbrush. You could airbrush the trucks. And we've probably got about, gee, with the airbrush, you've probably got nearly two thirds of the wheel there. And then you could roll a locomotive forward and uh, do, do the rest of this wheel with the, with the airbrush. But anyway, this is something a bit novel, you know. Okay, now we're going to get into the detailing side with pan pastel powders. And also we're going to put some really fine shadow lines in with this, what I've been talking about. To me, a panel line. This stuff is great. It's super liquid, super viscous, and uh, gets into all the fine little looks and crannies and makes some, really brings out the detail. So it's like a super fine black wash. So we'll be using that around the trucks to bring out some of the super detailing that is in these EMD trucks. Okay, so we're just going to apply... You may not see how well this brings us up here, but let's hope you do. That's probably a little bit too much on there, but anyway. You can really see how this brings out the detail there, and it does fade a little bit. Just got to dab it on there, and it will run. So you can see it bringing out the detail there. These trucks are uh, very well detailed, these EMD trucks. And of course you can go as much or as little as you like. Get rid of that bit up there. So you can see that bringing out the details there. We can also go up here if you want and do those. I guess that's a good thing about weathering. Did I just touch that there? I didn't. No, nope, doesn't matter. Okay. Now I've also used the panel line to do these vents here, only just like lightly, and I've used it on this vent here uh, because I didn't want it to be too rough, to too black. But these ones here, I've actually used panel line, and then I'll, I went over with with black paint. Now under the trucks, we're just going to give a little bit of uh, accent colours to the trucks. And we're going to use this, uh, a rust here, light rust and a brown, dark brown. These are pan pastels, which I really like. And we'll be applying them with this really soft brush here. So just to give a little bit of a different color, you know, there's many, many trucks and maybe take a little bit of that lightness away. Now what I've found with these pan pastels is if you use a really soft brush, it goes on more like a sponge. And But if you use a, a coarser brush or something else, yeah, they tend to uh, not be applied as heavy. So don't worry, see that? It's getting rid of that there. So it looks a little bit worse when you first put it on. But what I'm trying to do is not get rid of those other colours too much. Just darken down a little bit because I do like those lighter colors that are on there especially this bit here so I don't, really don't want to get rid of that and of course use a really nice soft brush to do your blending so I don't want this to blend this way so I'm not going that way I'm just going to blend it up and down so it doesn't go in and ruin that little bit of rust there which we can highlight With this, we can maybe yeah, do little bits there. You know, there's no, unless you go really stupid with weathering, there's really no wrong way to go about it. Coming from someone with no artistic ability at all, of course, you have to remember. But like in most things, less is more. Go. I like that. I do like that. I'm just going to go over where we've done that panel line just to sort of get a little bit of dirt in there so the uh, 
shadows don't come out too much. Now we're doing the fans on top of this Kato now. And of course, Kato haven't changed their moulds for about 20 years. So while they were probably some of the best detailed locos back in the 80s, they're uh, still very good, but the fans aren't see-through. So what we're doing now is just putting some of this panel line in here and you can see it falling into the, the uh, moulds here and it's falling in below the fan blades and you'll see it those fan blades starting to pop out there. So it turns a pretty average moulding, still a very highly detailed moulding, but turns it into almost see-through. And you, that's why this uh, panel line stuff is so good because it is super, super fine and runny. Viscous is the word that I'm after. And it really does make these fans pop out. So I really, if you really want to get into some really fine detailing on your locos, as in weathering, this panel line is great stuff. By all means, do a black wash first, which I think is a good idea to get that plastic look off the locomotive or your rolling stock. But once you've done that and you really want to access some fine like shadow lines and holes and latches, this panel line stuff, or India, India, India ink, is the go. But the beauty of this panel line comes with its own little brush, and the brush is really good. Super fine brush. I've been using this one tin for about five years now, and I've still probably got 80% of it left. So there you go. Tamiya panel line. Tamiya, send me a free bottle. Bastards. There we go. So you can see there now that those fans almost look like they're see-through. But of course they're not. And you can see because the, uh, the panel line has fallen off the blades and down into the, uh, the slots there, that most of it has fallen off the blades and gone into the crevices, which is what it's supposed to do. And it's made the fan blades pop. So there you go. There's a fish plate films fun fact for you to try at home. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, we spend an awful lot of time looking down on our locomotives and rolling stock. Probably more than what we do looking at them from the side. So I think it's really important to get the roofs of your rolling stock looking good. So I sort of spend a lot of time on that. I just want to take that little bit of brown there and make it a little bit, little bit less obtrusive. Maybe just a little patch here and there. Now, of course, we've, we've done the roof of this locomotive when we were spraying it. We put a very light spray on there with the airbrush. And what that does is that makes the powder stick. They don't like sticking to this uh, shiny paint. So, Although I have noticed some of the new freight cars around, especially Atlas, and a third to a degree, their flat matte paint takes powders quite well. But these old Kato locos, certainly not. You really have to put some, some basically primer on them. And uh, even with this exhaust here, I've sprayed, I've painted that black with a brush in there, and I, I did paint around here a little bit with a brush, but it uh, didn't stick real well. So, but anyway, I've had a look at. A lot of SD70 Mac executive. Anytime I see a video on YouTube, I'll stop it and, and have a look. And to all those people who film the tops of trains, thank you very much, especially when they're slow, because we don't get to see the top a lot. And you certainly need to see how the tops look. I've already done this once before, but I'll just do it a little bit more. So I'll just drag that back there a little bit because the soot will be going back that way. Not so much to the front, a little bit to the front. SD70 Max seem to be quite clean on top, reasonably clean on top. Whether BNSF keeps them clean, I don't know. But they don't seem to put a lot of soot from the exhaust out. 
So look, I'm happy with that. Now, while I'm quite happy with the black in these grills that was just done with the panel line, I'm going to go through and just put a little bit more in with some flat black paint and then wipe the tops off so I still get some of the green from the uh, grills shining through or the top of the grills. Now what I've done, I've let that dry a bit and I'm just going to go across here now and just remove some of the paint from the tops of the grills and just go around the edges there just to clean the frames up and that way it'll look like the inside of the grills are dirty but the tops of the grills these little raised bits here haven't got quite dirty enough yet so once again it gives a little bit more of a 3d effect you just have to be careful not to wipe it too much or too heavily or you'll start taking paint out of the grooves of course uh, if you start wiping it up and down you will start taking paint so you always wipe across ways right well now i'm pretty happy with how these have turned out these two sd70 max just cleaning the windows now, like I said before, I don't bother masking them, I clean them after. And look, there's not much paint on them. This is just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, which of course you should never clean your tracks with because it contains water and it will make your tracks worse. So two things you should keep away from your track, track rubbers and isopropyl alcohol. Well, there you go that's my take on weathering a sd70 executive mac of course there's many ways to do it i'm still learning uh, there's lots of other techniques you could do with cracking paint and blistering and stuff like that but i'm i'm not up there with that technique yet but this is i think a pretty good medium skilled weathering that anyone can do with a little bit of practice and also it's a light weathering as well so as a lot of these macs executive macs are quite clean which is good for BNSF to keep them clean. And the trucks mainly get dirty and a little bit up to size, but yeah, so anyway. But I'm quite happy with that. So I hope you've learned a few things. Uh, this has taken me a while to get to the stage where I'm happy to show you what I've done because I was learning myself. So as I said, hundreds of ways to weather a locomotive. That's my take on it. And hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next video on the Birdwood Sub. Thank you very much. Hooroo for now. Bye-bye.